It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. But I'm not talking about the Windows 11 release because I'm a couple days late. I'm sorry about that. Took me a little bit to grab a copy. But it has arrived, and I wanted to give you my quick comparison of Windows 11. Now, I don't want to walk through all of the setup. I will say the initial setup felt very, very much like Windows 10, except the out-of-box experience, which I'm going to play right now. Let's take a peek. I went ahead, the install process, very much similar to Windows 10, and it very unpolished. I think that's going to change a lot, so I'm not even going to bother showing it. This, however, I did want to show same questions, same setup. There is a couple things I've seen some YouTubers get wrong, which I will correct. Uh, when you're connecting up, just disconnect your internet and you can easily continue with the limited setup and do a local account. Some people are saying you can't, you have to use a Microsoft account now, much like the recent versions of Windows 10, exactly the same. So let's just put Chris Titus Tech. And another pro tip here, if you're ever setting up a Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine, just leave the password blank. You can add it after the fact and it saves you so much time. Privacy settings, all this exact same as Windows 10. And well, frankly, I just use Ono Shut Up for that. And you know, we might actually come back to this and use Ono Shut Up and see if it works on Windows 11. Now, why it's doing the setup process here, I wanted to say some people were saying slow performance or sluggish performance, and I think a lot of that was dealing with the fact they're using VirtualBox. Uh, right now, I am using Proxmox and more of a full-blown KVM or a actual hypervisor. VirtualBox is kind of what I consider the, the janky quick and dirty <laughs> virtual machine. Uh, good for some things, but for something like this, I would like to use something a little more professional like Proxmox, or even go even further and go into a full VMware or any other type of hypervisor that's more of a, a type one hypervisor that's at bare metal. Now, moving past that, I will say uh, there's a lot of similarities between 11 and 10 so much so i would just say this is a reskinned version of 10 and that's not a knock against microsoft mind you because in my opinion when you went from vista to 7 back in 2009 a lot of people don't cover this but i worked in it back then a patched vista system was very very similar to a 7 obviously vista had widgets and some other stuff that have now made a comeback with 11 which i'm going to get into in a second but it was very very similar and if you want to see the differences between this i highly recommend you google the mojave experiment you could see that uh, there was an image problem with windows vista and that's uh kind of showcased in the Mojave experiment. And then Windows 7 didn't make a whole lot of changes between Vista and 7 when it came to the actual kernel and some of the uh, foundations of Windows. It just kind of reskinned things a bit and then cleaned up and tightened a lot of the UI, which was great. That's why Windows 7 was just so popular. And I think we're seeing a resurgence here. So with that, let's get on the desktop. So here on the desktop, the very first thing, obviously the start menu. A lot of people have been given Microsoft grief over, hey, what is this new start menu with the all apps and pinning and all that? And I got to just say, people just want something to complain about. It's one of those things where I'm just like, hey, this is an improvement over the atrocious Windows 10 start menu. I thought live tiles were just garbage, always have. And... I actually like this a lot better than the Windows 10 version. Obviously, recommended, I will have to find some kind of way to just tweak that and rip it out because that's just going to be a good advertisement for all kinds of just garbage here. Let's just see what happens if I remove all this from the list. Yeah, the more you use your advice, the more show new apps here. I'm okay with that as long as it's not suggested apps like Windows 10 did, like with Candy Crush and stuff. If it's just my recents, I think that's a good thing. So I'll have to use a little bit more, but I'm okay with that. And I'm sure I could tweak that to where we could block Microsoft. And overall, I really like that. All these are just the junk apps that come in. Whenever setting up Windows, always never, never set it up with an internet connection. Always do limited experience, jump right in, done. And then uh, you can just 
come into here, unpin all these, because what will happen is if you have internet access when you first start these, all these junk apps that come with it, or get basically Microsoft gets paid to put these junk apps on here. Well, those junk apps will basically download it the first time you turn your system on. However, if you get in here, strip them out beforehand, you shouldn't see them, and then you can shouldn't see them actually, you know, go through your all apps and go, okay, do I need any of this? And then uh, it's very easy to uninstall all this when you don't have an internet connection. It just saves a little bit in time. So always offline. Ah, Windows 10, Windows 11, same thing when it comes to that. Now, with that said, pin the apps you're actually going to use and then use them. One thing I want to go over real fast is the file explorer. This is a spitting image of Windows 10. It probably You're probably thinking, wow, this is Windows 10 right here. And you're actually wrong. If you pull up this is my Windows 10. Now I'm using a dev build, uh, as you see right here, this is my Windows 10 that's on this box. But I wanted to show, this is how similar they are. And you can even dive in this a little bit more on this box. You can see this is Windows 10 dev. This is uh, the build number 21390. And then if we go into our actual Windows 11 box, we'll just right click, run, uh, I love that they kept the right, oh, I use this so much on Windows 10, I'm really glad they kept that, and go into Windows version. You can see they just adjusted that version number just a little bit more past the Windows 10 dev build. So, <laughs> kind of funny, but again, I'm okay with this because it's a very, very small leap between the two, and I think they're just trying to rebrand Windows 10 a little bit because it's kind of lost luster. There's, they've had a lot of bad updates, and it's gotten a lot of bad press, and Windows 11 can revitalize it, and they can charge everyone another $130 to $200 for a new license. It's just good business. So I'm sure they'll spend probably upwards of a billion dollars on marketing on this and polish up the rest of this menu uh, to make it a fully reskin Windows 10. Uh, you can see all the typing when you're typing. Same functionality as you get in this Windows 10. So you can see very, very similar in feature set. One thing I was really happy about though, task view, when you look at this, much, much more clean, which is great. Because if you look on this one and you hit task view, it's kind of a mess and I'm using dark theme, which isn't actually well done here. I imagine they're gonna clean dark theme up and actually not make it a, a beta like this looks. Oh, it looks atrocious. So I need to need to fix that up a little bit, but um, going on here, widgets, here's widgets in Windows 11. And then if we actually look at this, <laughs> deja vu. This just showed up a couple weeks ago on a lot of Windows 10 installs. Well, that is the widgets for Windows 11. I kind of like this version a little bit better if I was gonna actually use this feature. I really wouldn't, I would just unpin it and go on with my day. Much like I probably will just unpin the task view and just be like, eh. <laughs> because when I'm actually using my PC, I'm really just using File Explorer, maybe the occasional browser. I usually will just take store off, and this is probably what it'll look like. A lot of people are complaining about the centering of this and not putting over here. Oh, people just hate change. I love the center aesthetic of this, and I think this is actually a vast improvement. It feels much more minimal, clean, just overall, not such a tacked on bloated mess as Windows 10 as they tighten this UI up, which it needed a revamp for such a long time. Now, moving on here, I'm just going to go into settings here. This is Windows 10. There's no difference here. Almost nothing. I can't really see any difference between Windows 10 to Windows 11 here. Maybe some scroll bar and some inconsistencies but I would really hope before they publish this and push it live that these things are changed around because I've always hated the Metro UI. I've always hated this design and I would love it to where they would just strip all this out. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter to me because I never go into settings. If I'm going into something, I'm more stuck on Windows 7. And guess what? I still have my old school control panel just by going start run control and a lot of times when i'm managing user accounts and other things like that i'm just going you know all right well, let's go control user passwords too and i'm pulling that up all of it is still there there is no changes really to the actual foundation of windows it's just a reskin so i know that sounds uh, a little depressing for some folks but to me again i i'm actually kind of hopeful here because 
I loved Windows 7, and at the end of the day, it was a better than Windows Vista. And to me, this feels like a move more like that, where it was going from Vista to 7, a little more polished version of Vista, in my opinion, with a lot of features stripped out that just didn't work. There's a couple things in here that are just like, oh, why? <laughs> but that's just Microsoft. You're going to get that every time you, you get a product from them. I really love the fact that they actually borrowed a lot of design aesthetics from Mac. The rounded corners and a lot of the things you saw in this video come directly from that Mac influence. And it's a welcome change to what we're used to in Windows because uh, they've needed to clean things up. And you saw as I use this for just five minutes, I was able to clean it up and it looks so much more clean and minimal than a traditional Windows 10 uh, cleanup that I would do. And I can only imagine once I dive into PowerShell and start stripping out Notification Center and all the other stuff, because at the end of the day, this is just another build of Windows 10 done right, hopefully. <laughs> but I really am digging a lot of these changes. And I would definitely upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 whenever it is released, because this will be a better setup. Uh, I do think there's still going to be the same old, hey, strip out telemetry, they're spying, all that problems with Windows 10, all that baggage comes with it. But I'm okay with that because I don't have to really learn anything new everything's just there. But with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section because oh, Windows 11, it's it's pretty much here. We'll see the launch event on the 24th. I'll definitely look at it and see where we're at, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.